Welcome to the Unique Mums podcast. My name's Anna, and I'm a wife, mum, author, blogger, and Jesus follower, bringing you biblical truth, devotions, and encouragement so you can find joy, purpose, and hope as you navigate through motherhood, one cold cup of coffee at a time. You can find the episode show notes, free devotions, and a lot more information at uniquemums.co.uk. Hello, Mum. Welcome back to the Unique Mums podcast. And we're back with our subject, which is slow living, which is a really nice topic. I'm really enjoying sharing these podcast episodes with you about slow living, both in the interviews that I've been doing, and today I have another interview for you, as well as my research into it. And yes, it's been a real blessing. And today's episode is actually an interview with a friend of mine. Her name is Bella Easterbrook, and she is a wife, a mama, and she describes herself as a tea drinker. She actually has a blog and podcast called Over the Teacups, and she lives in Sydney, Australia, so it's lovely to hear her Australian accent. She lives with her husband and her three little boys. And she has a blog and podcast which revolve more around theology. But today in our conversation, we did talk. Obviously, we always have the part of theology because as Christians, we study the Bible. We study about God and his design for us. So that's always a part of it. But in this episode, we're talking about the practicalities of being mums and living more intentionally and slowly. And as a quick heads up, we do talk a little bit about social media and how distracting it can be at times. And so, yes, it's a really interesting interview. And yes, so grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee if you prefer and listen to this really great conversation. So hello, Bella. Welcome to the Unique Mums podcast. I'm happy to have you here today and to ask you a few questions about slow living. (laughs) Yeah, thank you for inviting me on. Yes, yes, I'm really excited to talk to you because I love talking to people about um, how they're mums, how they cope with yeah, being mums and being sometimes with other work as well and Christians. And uh, here on the podcast, actually, I've been talking a little bit about how Jesus lived in a very intentional way, like he made time for people and he was very intentional in the way he lived, and that's very kind of countercultural in the West. Like the world is more about uh, being driven and like rush and hustle and different things. And so, yes, as mums, how can we become more like Jesus in the way that we uh, raise our children? And so, I wanted to ask you. Uh, some like a few questions but starting off with this one so you're a wife and mum as well as a Christian podcaster and blogger Uh, so starting off uh, talking about this can you tell us about your testimony as a Christian Uh, when did you come to know Jesus as your savior yeah so I grew up in a Christian family both my mum and dad um, were involved in the church I always believed that Jesus existed I think growing up, I went to church, I'd read the Bible sometimes, but it didn't really shape my life very much. I would have called myself a Christian, but, you know, I had a lot of friends who were of other religions, and I thought, well, you know, as long as we're all just doing our best and trying to live a good life, you know, that's enough. But it was in my final year of school, and it was an Easter Sunday service, actually, and I heard a sermon about now, how being a Christian isn't just something that you say, it's about actually following Jesus. And I realized that I wasn't doing it. And that was a very convicting moment. And I realized then that I wanted to, like I actually wanted to not just say that I was a Christian, but actually live that out. And that was the start. And it's been around 20 years now um, since that moment. And yeah, 20 years that I've been living with Jesus as Lord, and it's still, it's always growing, always a learning process, like learning to follow him more and more. Mm. 
Yes, it's really good. Yeah, I love hearing people's testimonies. And some people that I asked for their testimony, they'll say like they became Christians, like um, they weren't from Christian families, but they became Christians later. Others like you and me, I suppose it's more this thing of growing up in a Christian home, but then that moment where we really realize what the Christian faith is about. Uh, so my testimony is kind of similar in that sense, like really understanding, in my case, it was more actually understanding the gospel, not just as a child, I thought of, well, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. It was kind of that very simple, which was a start, but like the understanding of what the gospel actually meant for me was a process. It took a long time. <laughs> um, but yes, I was also in a Christian family. And I suppose that seed of God's word was there from the beginning. So that's always really good. But we all need to get to this uh, stage of really understanding the faith and applying it for ourselves, like you said, about yeah. actually following Jesus, not just, yeah. you know, yeah. I go to church on Sunday. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I guess it's also thinking about us when we have our own kids and we're at the stage where we're planting those seeds. We're talking about Jesus and for my ones, like they're very young, so it's hard to know exactly what they understand. But hopefully now I can be, you know, planting those seeds. And then as they grow up, hopefully it becomes a mature living faith as they grow older. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's something that as they grow and maybe apply to their lives. And actually, this is uh, interesting because we're talking a bit about motherhood. Um, but in terms of you being a mum, how would you say, are you, in what way are you intentional in spending time with God as a Christian? And how does that actually relate to motherhood? Yeah, so I think for me, one of the big things that I've found is really important is beginning the day with God. So for me, that looks like actually taking the time to read my Bible. Like I used to spend my mornings, you know, scrolling on Instagram and that was the first thing I'd do while I was having my breakfast. But then recently I've been convicted to actually take that time to read the Bible instead. And at the moment I've been going through the Book of Romans. So just reading a little bit and thinking about it, what it means, writing like a few little sentences of my reflections and and I think starting the day in God's word has been really helpful and praying for each of my family members, for my boys, for my husband, you know, praying for each of them and also praying for myself um, for the day, like praying that God will give me strength for that day, you know, the strength that I need. And so all of these things, like taking the time to spend with God first, like this is something that I've I only started really doing intentionally recently. So, you know, it's still something I'm learning to do consistently, but I have found it really helpful. Like, because I think if we're going to be, you know, mums that are gentle and patient and gracious and all those things that we want to be for our kids, you know, we can't do it in our own strength. So, you know, if we want to do these things, we have to be connected into God. And... And I think I know, like when I rush ahead and I forget to do these things, or I get distracted and I go through the day and like I'm just getting cranky or impatient or stressed and you know, I realise that I'm not connected into God. And I guess you might sort of think, you know, the idea, we have this idea of, you know, the Christian quiet time and it's all, you know, this beautiful decorative, you know, the candle and the, the nice cup of tea and the beautiful notebook and Bible and you've got all this time to you know journal and usually you know in the morning my six-month-old son is already awake so he's with me and sometimes my other two are there as well so it's not about you know having this perfect peaceful quiet time it's about just opening the Bible even if it's you know noisy or busy already a bit chaotic it's about opening the Bible and hearing from God and then, you know, speaking to him, connecting with him and, you know, asking him to give you that strength for the day, asking him to help you be gentle and patient and, you know, hardworking to do the things that you need to do throughout the day. I think also, 
like spending time with God in the morning, but then also continuing to spend time with him. And they're listening to worship music throughout the day, listening to Christian podcasts and yeah, like just sort of having that time praying, little things that come up throughout the day. This is something that I'm, you know, learning to do more and more. Like when something comes up, instead of you know, stressing about it or instead of just trying to distract myself with social media or whatever it is, you know, going to God and praying for it instead. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, uh, I agree with um this area of well I agree with I can relate to I should say <laughs> this thing of starting the day off with God um and similar to you when I was especially when my children were little that was very difficult to do uh, especially because they were around of course <laughs> in the early morning but even when they weren't sometimes I felt just so tired but it's interesting how the very things that are good for us sometimes they're the hardest to do like It's so much easier just to get your phone out and like, as you said, just go on social media or check your emails or whatever. And actually the thing that's going to help you the most is actually spending time with God and reading his words. That's going to edify you. That's going to strengthen you. And yet, obviously, in motherhood, we know it's hard at times when we're tired or our kids are around. But yeah, we just, as you said, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us as well in that process and to be showing us as well how we can have that intentional time with God, how we can kind of get away and have a time uh, listening to him and reading the words. So, yeah, it's going to be different, I suppose, for different people as well, How what that actually looks like in practice. And sometimes it might not be that you have heaps of time in the morning to do a huge study it might be just you yeah. can read a devotional for a few minutes and really connect in that and yeah. save your time for like later in the day or another time where it's better yes yes exactly yes that's actually that's one of the reasons that I created the first few seasons here on the unique mums podcast were actually devotions because I was thinking specifically of mums who might struggle with like actually sitting down and reading like a devotional book, uh, although that's good as well, and especially reading the Bible, all of those things are good, but there could be days where it's really hard. And so maybe even just listening to something like the Bible verse and a short devotion, it's better than not having kind of any input at all. So yes, having, yeah. yeah, so having like the audio, having, but then as you said, like even if it's at night or at lunchtime when the children are having a nap, then having a longer time of like quiet and reading, obviously that's that's really good. Yeah. yeah. And I think I find change like different seasons of my life, like when I can actually fit in that mm-hmm. like really intentional time with God. Like sometimes the mornings work best, but other times, you know, it's work better in the evenings or like during nap times and yeah, like the time itself doesn't really matter so much. It's the fact that we are actually seeking to connect with God. And, mm, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a magic formula that, you know, if we do this thing, then everything will go smoothly. You know, mm-hmm. but it's not, you know, we read the Bible and then the day will be perfect. But I think it's, you know, when those difficult times do come, mm. you know, if we're connected with God and we've, you know, prayed for his spirit to guide us and we're, you know, we're thinking about, you know, what does God value, you know, where we're reacting to these things in a way that's more gracious and more patient, because, you know, we can, yeah, we can do things in a way that honors God rather than, you know, from our own strength. Mm, Yeah, yes, that's it. So, yes, it's an interesting kind of thing that um in the in the word actually it doesn't although we see Jesus's example where he went to the desolate places to pray and be alone with God uh, like you say there's no kind of formula like you have to do it this way it has to be as soon as you get up in the morning or whatever uh, it's going to look different in different seasons yeah and uh, your blog and podcast are specifically more about theology what do you believe is the theology behind slow and intentional living okay so the first thing that um comes to mind is the story of mary and martha mm-hmm. so it's yeah. right in luke chapter 10 so we have you know martha is running around jesus is coming to visit them and you know, Martha's running around trying to get everything ready and Mary is just 
sitting at Jesus' feet and she's just enjoying listening to him. And, you know, Martha gets really angry and she says, you know, why is Mary just sitting here doing nothing? Mm. And Jesus tells them that Mary has chosen the better way. And I think here we have, you know, the principle of slowing down and just spending time with Jesus. And she was delighting to be in his presence. And I guess there's always so many different things that we could be doing. And some of them, you know, they are good things. But first of all, you know, before we get any anything else done, we have to be with Jesus. You know, we have to spend that time with God. And I think it comes, you know, first that we are, you know, it's a relationship saved by grace. You know, we're not doing things mm. in our own efforts. We're not striving to to achieve so that takes a lot of the pressure Mm. off you know we don't have to be this perfect person that's achieving all the things we can slow down and we can rest even when you know we might see so many other things that could be done you know it's not about how well we do things or how we can juggle you know the keeping the house looking after the kids you know working outside the home all the things that we might have in our lives so it's not about how well we can juggle all those things you know first it's about us coming to God and Mm. yeah delighting in him and he is you know the the most important thing in our life and we're spending time with him first yeah I agree yes it's that's like the the foundation yeah and it's interesting that you related it to that story of Mary and Martha yeah obviously one thing that I, I actually wrote about a little bit about that story in my first book Unique I was thinking about that thing that it's not like one way is like working is wrong or sitting at or resting is wrong. Both of them are important, but it's more about this thing of your focus and your motivation of, as you said, if you we slow down enough to listen to what God is saying and then letting that impact us in the way we then live and serve other people. Yes, it's more like about the foundation. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because it's not like we, you know, just have to sit around and do nothing, (laughs) only read our Bibles and never do anything else. You know, we're still called to be hardworking and still called to care for our family and Mm -hmm. for our home. But I guess it's, you know, we're coming coming to those things from a place of rest, you know, knowing Mm -hmm. that we are safe. You know, we're not doing it to earn our salvation or, you know, earn favor in God's eyes. We're doing it in his strength, you know, doing it to honor him, you know, not to to honor ourselves or put ourselves up on that pedestal. Mm, yes, yes, that's good. Yeah, because yeah, it can actually, uh, one thing I, I uh, did an episode about this the other day about the Sabbath rest, which is something that not all Christians practice, but we started doing it actually as a family. Uh, recently but one of the things that we uh, actually has come maybe to the forefront of my mind about it is just to, it's a, a time to remember that God is in control and he's the one who's building mm-hmm. his kingdom yeah. and so it's not obviously he chooses to use us in his kingdom but he's not dependent on us uh, so because he's sovereign and so it's just uh just remembering that as you were saying and when we slow down each day to spend time with God I guess that's what we're doing as well we're recognizing that he's the one in control and that we're just completely dependent on him and so yes obviously he wants to use us and he does use us but we need this foundation that we need to go to him first and get strength from him and yeah so it's a a similar kind of thing yeah and I guess that's where spending more time with God, like we're like learning more about him and yeah, I guess learning more about like what he values. So like our values and the things that we place as priorities in our life, you know, they're, they're shaped by God. So we've got things like, you know, caring for our family and you know, for our children, for our husband, connecting with other people, you know, showing hospitality, sharing the gospel, all those sort of things, you know, hopefully, you know, as we're spending more time with God, you know, we're making choices in our life that, you know, how can we be living, you know, our daily life to actually support these things, you know, that, that God values. Mm. Yeah, and it's hard to balance all of those things sometimes. So I guess it's also having that discernment of, you know, what God wants 
for you because mm. there's so many different good things could be done, but it's then also, mm. you know, what does God want me to be doing in my context mm-hmm. you know, right at this moment? Mm. Yes, that's true, yeah, because it's very easy within um kind of christian culture to think well you know this is a good thing i better just do it and like you say some things could be good but they're not right for you in your season or even in general it might not be the right thing for you and your family so yes that discernment (laughs) yeah and obviously if we want to live more slowly and intentionally we are going to have to kind of have this discernment so we know what God wants us to do and live uh, with that focus and what he wants to um, us to let go of or uh, some some things unfortunately in our human nature we'll just do because we're trying to please other people or try to live out someone else's calling instead of our own so yes it's like you say you need that discernment yeah and I think that's where it comes back to grace as well like Mm -hmm. it always comes back to being safe I suppose that Whatever it is that we're called to do or mm. to put aside, like that's not going to affect our salvation. Now we come from that place of grace and then mm. we can, yeah, listen to what God wants us to do from mm. that place. Yes, yes, that's really good. Yes, this helps us not to live under the guilt. What other, mm-hmm. what other people are doing and how, you know, for one example, like I know other people take their kids to lots of different Mm. activities like swimming and music and yeah. all of those sort of things and we we take our kids they go to one mm-hmm. one activity but they, we don't do all the different sort of things and even mm-hmm. looking at that and seeing oh are my kids missing out or mm. but then God has not called us to do those things so then it's just being at peace with well this is what he's called us to do and mm. that's good for those other families so then it's mm. yeah, yeah we don't have to feel shame for like the way that God has called us to yeah to raise our kids yes exactly yes actually it's very similar with us and our kids are a bit older but at the moment they only go to swimming lessons that's like the only activity that they do and it does feel a bit like that some parents even find it a bit strange like don't they do more more activities don't they do more things Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, but yes they need to do what God wants us to do at the end of the day and not conform to the culture just because but obviously if God calls us to do a certain thing that's different but not just do it just to copy what other people are doing yes yeah yeah and do you have any testimonies about times that God showed you to slow down and live more intentionally yeah so I'm thinking last year like the beginning of last year Mm -hmm. I had all these these hopes for the year like I was um was um set up to lead a Bible study at church. I was working two days a week. Mm. I had you know, I was going to start the podcast um mm. for my blog. Um, I had two kids at that time, and you know I think I was going to do all these you know activities for them. You know it's going to be you know all these things planned out, and then I found out that I was pregnant. And you know we were you know thinking that that was something that we wanted, but. That just threw all my plans in the air. It was a difficult first trimester. I had bad morning sickness and really it just forced me to slow down. And God was taking a lot of those things that I had planned for the year. Mm. He had taken them away. So I stopped leading a Bible study. I still went along, but I wasn't in that leading capacity. I had to take time off work because my Mm. morning sickness was so bad. I was limited in what I could do like with looking after my boys so in this time like it was I guess pressing into God for strength and spending time in his word like I read a lot of the Psalms in that time and that was really helpful and yeah I guess you know sometimes God takes us through those seasons to remember like to remind us that it's not in our own strength Mm. and I remember you know when my youngest was born like later that year that was another time of just setting all those things aside and you know, not being able to achieve as much. And sometimes that's okay. Mm. Like I think God, yeah, reminds us that it's never been about our own strength to begin with. Like it's always been about what he's calling us to do and what he's equipping us. So sometimes he does, you know, when we've, we've got too much on our plate, he does actually, you know, make us you know, go through those seasons where, 
we have to put some things aside and just mm. you know press back into him and lean into his strength Mm, yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's happened to me as well in different seasons. But it's interesting how it sometimes it has to be like something that almost comes to interrupt us, like, um, like in your case, a pregnancy. Like God just saying, that like, now is the time actually to slow down, and and yes, and God's maybe taking us through these times where He just wants us to focus more on His words and spending time with him and not trying to be doing all these different things and I know in my life God has been speaking to me about that as well like uh, in different times of my life when I start feeling overwhelmed or whatever usually it's because there are too many things that I'm trying to either sometimes it's just obviously my own thing of wanting to control things rather than trusting more in God but then other times it really is just like trying to do too much and um, yeah and then God challenges me like you're just trying to do too much (laughs) um and as you say it just reminds us that yeah God is in control and Mm. it's not about us so that's that's important (laughs) yeah yeah but it is it's such a a relief I think to know that it, it isn't about all mm-hmm. about us it isn't about how well we can balance everything in our lives it's about God and about giving him glory mm. and and his strength and his grace mm, that's right yeah so that we have the right motivations it's not about us yeah and especially yeah. nowadays yeah. I think with um with social media specifically, I think we tend to want to like show people like what we're doing and look, I'm doing this or I'm doing that. And it can become a bit, it's not always, but it can become this thing of like glorifying ourselves and look at me, look at what I'm doing. And so doing sometimes this thing of slowing down is also, I think, God's way of showing us, as you were saying, that it's about him. And sometimes we need to become maybe more invisible almost, like not be showing people what we're up to or what's happening because at the end of the day, we're just spending more time with God and letting him change us and even working in a way that maybe isn't always visible, but it's still important because God sees what's happening. Yeah, so there's that side of things as well. Yeah, and I guess with social media, it has been that, like you can just show everyone else, you know, you can take pictures of your your quiet time in your Bible study. Mm, and you know, like yeah. I, I love seeing on Instagram people have pictures of their Bibles with their notes and things that they've been, you know, God's been speaking. I love seeing those yeah. sort of things. But mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes it's just, you know, they've got their beautifully set out mm. Bible study. And yeah, sometimes you wonder, is this just for, mm. for the show or is this actually for you know, if you didn't have it up on social media, like it would Mm. still be. Yes, exactly. So yeah, with social media, it can depend a lot, like what are the, what are our motivations or what's actually happening? Is this really like a a real portrayal of something that's real in our lives? Or is it something that we're just trying to show off? Yeah, so there is that. And yeah, it all goes back to motivation. Is it to glorify God or is it to glorify ourselves? But I think one thing I've been thinking about is also this importance, and this is one of the things about living more slowly as well, is the importance of the actual face-to-face community with uh, people like the church and people we know, because sometimes we can kind of, uh, the way that we see things and even our mindsets can be a bit all related to what we see on social media. Uh, even the way we see people that we know but actually you know actually seeing people face to face actually seeing what people are like that's important so social media can give us maybe a bit of an idea but it can't really give us like the total vision of what someone is like and how they live so I think with slow living it's a lot of times when you read about even people who talk about slow living in a more secular way so they're not Christians but they do mention this idea as well of you know, being more present with the people you're with and not being too caught up with your phone and with the virtual life and all that. And so that is, I think, a side that's important for us as Christians to use it as a tool. Uh, in, in some cases, it depends on the person, of course, but but just not letting our whole lives revolve around it as well. Especially as mums, I think, as well, like to be present mm. with our kids instead of just scrolling 
all the time and then they see it as well and then mm. that's you know, what sort of habits do we want yeah to be encouraging in them but then we actually have to be mm. practicing that as well we exactly. want them to not be obsessed with their screens like we have to be modeling that as well and being present with them and with other people and mm. yeah. yeah it's a challenge yeah mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Actually, I did something recently about that, which was that I actually took off uh, social media from my phone because at one point it was distracting me quite a bit, specifically Instagram. I don't know why specifically Instagram, but I was finding it very distracting. And so I just took it off my phone and I just used the desktop version and then I download it now and then if I, there's something specific that doesn't work on the desktop version now and then I just download it, do the thing and then take it off again. But yes, it's this thing of, as you said, like as a mum, you want your children to to know what it is to really live, not to be like consumed with a digital life, but yeah, giving people attention, looking at them in their eyes, not being always distracted. And it's important for them so they know that we love them. It's important for them to see us doing that with others as well. So yeah, there's a lot we could talk about in relation to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I have one last question, which is tell us a bit about your blog and podcast. Why do you create Christian content for others? Yeah, so my blog um, is Over the Teacups. Um, so I've got um, Instagram, I'm, I'm on quite a bit. Um, I've got my blog where I share more like longer form articles. I've got um, the podcast, which is sort of connected into those articles as well. And yeah, I think the focus of that is um, mainly about the Bible and about theology. Um, and particularly, um, I love talking about how um, Jesus is reflected in the Old Testament. So a lot of my my writing sort of connects into that kind of thing. And yeah, first of all, like I create this content because I love to write. Like I think this is a passion that God has given me. And like, I think if I'm going to write and I'm going to fulfill this passion, like what better thing is there to write about than God and about who he is? And like for me, like when I'm researching and you know, writing these things, that's a form of worship. Like that's how I can worship God and connect with him, like by learning about who he is and like putting that to to pen and paper, like writing, you know, just about how amazing he is. and. Yeah, so I hope then you know, that I can share that with other people. Like I hope that that love for him that I have, you know, that can encourage other women to know God more and to love him more. Because I think, you know, as we do, like we get to know who God is, you know, through the Bible, we learn who he is and what he's done for us. Like I think it's actually really relevant for our lives. It's not something that is separate like we've got theology over here we've got real life over here in another section it's actually integrated like as we learn more about who God is that shapes the way that we see ourselves it shapes the way we act towards other people how we just live our daily lives how we work how we love our kids you know it's all connected with knowing who God is and knowing you know what the Bible says about everything in our lives yeah, I totally agree. It's very similar with me that uh, I love writing and similar to you, I just feel like just pointing people to God and yeah, um, it's such like it's the essence of our lives. Like it doesn't make sense for me just to write general things. It, it has mm. to be somehow focused on God. Like one day I would like to write fiction, but uh, if I do, I would like it to be always pointing more always pointing to God and always pointing to the gospel. And as you say, it just it affects just the way we live. And yeah, it's working in God's kingdom. It's one of the ways we can do that is through our writing and podcasting as well. <laughs> and so anyway, I'm going to link your blog and your podcasts on the show notes. But thank you so much for coming today and for having this uh, conversation. It was really a blessing. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting me on. It was lovely to talk. Yes, thank you.